Hello? Arrow Collins. What a name. Arrow Collins. What's up? It's just one of those acting names. You know what it's like. I mean, you can't go in there as a Clarence and people go, what? What's going on with that? You got to go with the Arrow name. But are you a Clarence? Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, I gotta know after after, like that. after experiencing obliterated. I gotta ask. I mean, have you guys been partying all night just to get to these conversations? Because I want to know that we can all just get together and throw down a serious party. <laughs> uh, yesterday, Shelly and I had some work to do, uh, pushing some product, and very very early in the morning. And the night before, I was lying in bed. And um, I had this bottle of champagne. Somebody sent me a bottle of champagne in like a like a military briefcase with like two champagne flutes. And it was just sitting there. And I was like, you know what? We're doing it. So I put the champagne <laughs> in the refrigerator. Yesterday morning around 5.45 in the morning, Shelly and I sat in front of two cameras. And I just popped open the champagne. I was like, we're doing it. And we did it, and it was glorious, and it made complete sense, and it felt more and more natural, to be honest. I'm doing it again right now. There you go. <laughs> what What's fun about this show is the fact that it, it really does play hard in, in Las Vegas. In other words, I love the scenery in the background. I love how you guys are moving. There's there, there's such an edginess about it, and there's also a fear, because I, you know, in watching the show, it's like, this could happen, this, this, and, and that's when I really get drawn into a storyline. Yeah, there's a real threat, even though it's called obliterated and you're seeing us, you know, celebrate the fact that we've found the nuke, deactivated it and saved Las Vegas. um, You know, then we'd find out it was a fake nuke. And uh, now we're completely obliterated. We have to get back out there, which is my character's worst nightmare. Um, And maybe McKnight's uh, dream come true to have another challenge. Uh, I'll let Nick speak on that, but... Um, it's, uh, there's a real threat and, and I'm glad you pointed that out because I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a wild one. Being a part of the Netflix family, to me, that's been my go-to for everything. And that's the way I want to experience these stories. It's like getting a big, thick book and saying, all right, I'm going to get into this because I know there's a lot to digest. And that's how I feel about about Obliterated is the fact that you're giving us enough time to love these characters, to become these characters. And it's not just a rush, rush kind of movie. Yeah, it's great. It's also a testament to uh, John, Josh, and Hayden and uh, the world they created. They created that space. They created these characters, and they, like, you know, really gave us the space for input. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, uh, they embraced us, and we embraced them. And I think collectively, we all wanted this to be as good as possible. And um, thankfully, it worked out. It's a big ensemble. And John, Josh, and Hayden cared about, obviously, every character. And every actor had an arc. And it's so special to watch. It's not just leaning on one person. Um, And you fall in love with this group. And... I mean, you might even cry at times. I've had people tell me that was their experience and uh, how cool that this is such a big action comedy, but yet there's there's heart. It's hard to pull off. It, it's almost like an action comedy in the way of Friends and How I Met Your Mother. It's like if those guys were CIA, wow. that's who they would be. Wow. Oh, wow. We're going to start describing it that way. Is that cool? <laughs> it's like How I Met Your Mother and... <laughs> Big bang theory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I mean you you really do you bring a storyline and, and you you sit there and you wait for the comedy to happen. Now the one thing that I'm gonna check out is when because it is on Netflix, I get to go back and look for the Easter eggs. Now because in the first showing, I'll sit there and say, Okay, okay, I see where they're going, but now I wanna know, did they leave me an Easter egg where I should have known this before I got there? Oh, that sounds fun. Ooh. Sounds like a fun game. I haven't done that yet. It's because because everything leads to something. You'll see something in a scene and you'll go, really? Why didn't I see that the first time that I saw it? Because that character right there is coming back in a different scene. And I'm and I should have caught them in the beginning. Yeah, one yeah. thing that happened for me in that way during filming was the first episode, McKnight says something like, uh, wow, you're going commando in more ways than one. Mm-hmm. And uh, that set up 
the fact that Ava's going commando. And that meant we had to stand by that for the rest of the series because it's like the show 24. It takes place in one to two days. And uh, I also had to do, you know, a bunch of action with with that being part of my character. So that was tricky and uh, something I don't think was intentional, but um, a pretty funny behind the scenes tidbit that just feels right in line with the tone of the show. <laughs> so have, have anybody, has anybody from the CIA or even our, our military men and women, have they come up to you and said, ah, you guys are living this out. We lived it out too. And you're doing quite well in making sure that this was really felt like, like a real life situation. First of all, it's been abundantly clear. We need a comedy. We're, uh, we're, we, we're, there's no zero doc 30 going on. So we hope that any of our military service people like enjoy the show for what it is, which is like, which is an action comedy. Yeah. And if we become an inside joke, if they start using uh, a reference from our show and their day to day activities protecting our country, then that's a dream. Yeah. That is a dream, and our job is is done. If they start calling each other Trunk and McKnight and Winters or whatever, that's a dream. We love all of our service people, and we hope they, they love this and have fun with it. How do you keep it so natural? Because with the comedy there, I mean, so many times, you know, comedians, co- comedians will tell you that, you know, you, you, you have to craft the joke. Well, I mean, but the way that you guys deliver things where we do get that, that burst of laughter, it's so smooth. I mean, it, is, if you overpractice it, it's too much. But yet you guys do it just so naturally. Situational. And, and, and that's where, thank you for that. You're right. Thank you. But it is situational and it is, so that does go to the writing. Writing and our collaboration with John, Josh, and Hayden, our brilliant show creators, it was very important to them that it stayed as grounded as it possibly could because it was in the writing. We didn't have to add, you know, we didn't have to, it it was there and it was just up to us to believe the threat and, and believe that we were playing real people. And I think that's why it works. Everyone took it seriously, even though it's, you know, hilarious you, you, that's that's comedy though you, you you it's rooted in in reality well, in the radio world, we call it water cooler conversation. I just, I just cannot wait to talk with you guys more in the future, and I hope that we can just continue to grow with this show or stories like it in the future. Well, let's do water cooler whispers about the show, <laughs> yeah. just for your own HR purposes. <laughs> we'll talk to you before season two. Excellent. We'll do it. We'll do it. You be brilliant today, okay? You too. Thank you.